Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus, the Messiah, he is King of kings and Lord of lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Now we're continuing on our study on the seven churches in the book of Revelation, the first couple of chapters. And today we are in chapter 2, verse 18, and we'll be discussing the church of Thyatira. Now, because this is a little bit more lengthy than the previous churches, we'll break this down verse by verse. And please keep in mind, the intention of this study is not necessarily to learn what the Lord had to say to the church at that time, but how these apply into our lives today. You see, in the majority of these churches, Jesus found something that he loved about the church but he also found something that he did not approve of in the church. And if he were to examine my life and he were to examine your life today, what would he find that he approves of? And more importantly, what would he find that he disapproves of? Because our goal in the Christian life isn't to focus on the things that Christ approves of. Rather, it's to focus and to work on the things that he doesn't approve of, to get those things out of our lives. And so I trust that you have your Bible open in front of you, Revelation chapter 2, and let's begin with verse 18. He says, Unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Now when it says the Son of God here, this is the only time this title, this name, this reference to Jesus is used in the entire book of Revelation. And so in the past, when he has referred to himself as the son of man, it's because he come to serve. But in this letter to this church, he is representing himself as the son of God. And the reason for that is judgment. And so I want you to picture in your mind, you're sitting in this small congregation in this small home 2,000 years ago, and you're reading this letter from Jesus to you. Would this not make you sit up and pay attention? And should it not even now? So he says, I'm not coming as the lamb. I'm coming as the lion. And I'm writing this letter to you so that you will know that my eyes are like a flame of fire. Well, look down at verse 23. He says, I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts of men. I am the one searching your heart. I am the one searching your soul. And there's nothing that you can hide from me. We can hide it from others. We can even hide it from those that are closest to us, our husbands, our wives, our children, our co-workers, our friends. But we cannot hide it from the Lord because his eyes are like unto a flame of fire penetrating to the very core of who we are. And he says his feet are like fine brass. Now, when he speaks of fine brass here, he's speaking of judgment. If you'll look at Revelation chapter 19, and verse 15, in speaking of Jesus here, he says, Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. How does he tread upon this winepress? He does so with feet that are like fine brass. Again, if we look at verse 23 back in Revelation 2, he says, I will give unto every one of you according to your works. I am your judge. And where you deserve to be rewarded, you will be rewarded. And where you deserve to be punished, you will be punished. Because I have eyes like a flame of fire. And his feet are like fine brass judging us. Without all the excuses, without all the compromises, without all the justifications, he sees us as we really are. He says in verse 19, I know your works and charity and service and faith and your patience and your works and the last to be more than the first. He says here, I know thy works. I know what you're doing faithfully for me. I know your charity, how you're putting others before yourself. I know your service unto these you're putting before yourself. I know your faith. I know your patience and I know your works and the last to be more than the first. Well, the first thing he mentions is works. And so how is that different from one another? How is the latter better than the first? Because the initial stages of your works weren't as lengthy and full as your works today. Your works have grown over time. 
Now he says several favorable things about this church, but in verse 20, he says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because you have sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now to break this down, he says, the first thing I have against you is that you're suffering the woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. So even though she calls herself a prophetess, that's not what the Lord calls her. And the problem isn't necessarily what she is teaching, but that the church has allowed a woman the authority to teach over a man. Look again at what he says. He says, I have a few things against you because you suffer a woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants. Stop right there. The first thing I have against you is that you are allowing a woman who calls herself a pastor to teach and seduce my servants. There's two things there, to teach and seduce my servants. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12 says, I do not suffer a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now it goes on and explains why, and that's not the purpose of this study today, but the problem is, is a woman has been given authority over the church. Now you may say, pastor, I've got friends, I know people, maybe even my pastor is a woman. Well, biblically speaking, according to the word of God and the very words of Jesus himself, that is not allowed. It's not to be tolerated. And Jesus says it's not only a problem that she's teaching the church, but what she is teaching is false. She is seducing my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now he uses the word Jezebel here, and most likely that wasn't the woman's name, but he's using that in reference to Jezebel from the Old Testament, the book of 1 Kings. Now in this story, King Ahab marries Jezebel and Jezebel ends up seducing King Ahab and bringing him over to worship her false god, specifically Baal. And throughout time, it ends up corrupting all of Israel because all of Israel is no longer worshiping Yahweh, but they're worshiping Baal. And it was all due to the deeds of this woman Jezebel. And so that's why Jesus says, I don't want you to have a woman teaching over you because she can cause you to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Because as men, you're not thinking with your minds. And so because she is teaching a doctrine outside that of Jesus's doctrine, apparently she is being led by Satan. Surely it's not the spirit of God that's leading her. And so because it is Satan that's leading her in her false teachings, she attacks the very heart of the Christian message to the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 15, we see the leaders of the church, specifically the disciples and Paul, come together to reason together to figure out whether the Gentiles are supposed to follow all the laws of the Jews or if they get a pass. And in verse 19, he says, Wherefore my sentence is that we do not trouble them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them, and they abstain from pollution of idols, from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. And so the very mandates that are placed upon the Gentile church is exactly what Lucifer is using through this woman Jezebel, this female pastor, to seduce and teach the people of God. He says, She is seducing my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now God has very strict laws when it comes to sexual relationships, and it's only exercised within a male and female marriage relationship. Anything outside of that is sexual sin, fornication. And inside the marriage relationship, it is only to be between the two partners themselves. Well, in verse 21, he says, I gave her time to repent. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but she did not repent. Remember what we talked about last time, Matthew chapter 18? You go to them privately, you take two or more, you stand them up in front of the church. If they're not willing to repent, it's a true indication that they're not born again. And that's what he says here. He says, she's not my child because she is unwilling to repent. Behold, because of this, I will cast her into a bed. Most likely this is a bed of sickness, near death sickness. I will punish her and chastise her for what she's doing in hopes of reaching her that she will repent. And not only her, but all of those that commit adultery with her in great tribulation. And so he says those who are being misled by her false teaching will be punished as well. 
and they will experience great suffering in their life as a form of my chastisement because of the things that they're doing that I do not approve of, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death. And so there will be some among this small fellowship that will fall in death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So the things that you're doing, you may think are being done in secret, but Jesus says, I see it all. And you will reap what you sow, bringing tribulation, suffering, pain, and misery into your life. But in verse 24, he says, Unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many have not this doctrine, who are not being misled by this false teaching, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. And so what Jesus is saying is be faithful with the things that you know. As you read the word of God, as you spend time in prayer, as you become obedient to the Holy Spirit, and you're being led into all truth, be faithful what is being revealed to you. And he that does overcome and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now in Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, it says, He has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now we touched on this last time, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but we are going to reign on planet earth with Jesus Christ. We are not going to live in heaven. And during the first thousand years of Christ's reign on earth, there is going to be human flesh born onto this earth that never had an opportunity to choose between right and wrong, sin and righteousness. And so it seems the only way obedience will be achieved is that we will have to rule over them with rods of iron as Jesus' kings and priests. In other words, Jesus will reign from Jerusalem, we'll take our orders from him, and there will be some of us that will be appointed places throughout the nations of the earth, and we will lead those people. And many will only be led by a rod of iron. He continues in verse 27 by saying, He shall rule them with a rod of iron, and as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So as Jesus learned by his suffering they will learn through their suffering. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 says, Though he were a son, speaking of Jesus, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And that's what Jesus says here. He says they will be ruled with a rod of iron, and as the vessels of a potter, they will be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And he ends by saying, I will give him the morning star. Now in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19, we're told that Jesus is the bright and morning star. He is the day star, and Jesus will give to the overcomer his glory. And just as Jesus shines brighter than the sun, so shall we, the overcomers. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, at the beginning of this study, I asked you to visualize yourself in that small, tiny fellowship, in that small, tiny home 2,000 years ago, hearing this message for the first time, from the Lord Jesus Christ, specifically to you. How awestruck, how fearful, how alert would you be to the things that Jesus has just told you? Especially if your conscience is pricking you and you know that you're guilty of the things that he mentioned. Would you repent of your sin? Would you surrender to the doctrine and teaching of the Lord Jesus? Or would you compromise? Would you justify? Would you rationalize what it is that you're doing? You see, friends, as we examine ourselves today, you know, we're told that Jesus' eyes are like unto a flame of fire, and it is he who searches the reins and the hearts. Yet we are also told that we are to examine ourselves daily to ensure that nothing has crept in, that nothing is hiding in a dark corner that we haven't overlooked or missed anything. Friends, are you examining your life? Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus on his terms? Or have you been swept away by your own lust and desire to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, and when you want to do it? Friends, I would encourage you today as we close, examine your heart. And if you're unable to do that, at least open your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to examine your heart for you. And anything that comes to mind that you feel guilty of, that you're not proud of, 
receive the risen Lord and the blood that he shed on Calvary and allow it to wash you whiter than the driven snow. And then stand in praise and adoration, knowing that your sins are forgiven and you have been given power to overcome those sins, both now and forever. And that should bring praise to our lips and joy to our souls. May your walk with the Lord Jesus be fruitful today, friends, and may his blessings be plenteous in your life. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.